Oh, great. All right, so, so they can be vulnerable, but dangerous. Social anthropologist and senior lecturer, Dr. Herbert Gale, has been doing research for 28 years on women in gangs. The most oh. recent term being used is kerosene oil women. Dr. Gale joins us now. It's going to be a fascinating discussion. Always love to hear your insights, Dr. Gale. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Morning. 28 years um, on women in gangs. Tell me what sparked the research, first of all. That's a long time. All right. Uh, the, the first time I actually saw a woman uh, do uh, a killing, uh, and and that really, uh, this is in, in Jamaica here, and that really frightened me. In fact, I remember her speaking to me uh, right afterwards because I was in the field with my team and she had just shot someone and walked towards us and did, and went, shh. And I, I, I looked at her and she spoke to me and says, yeah, good you, you know. <laughs> And that was it. And and that was very, very early from the days when I was working very directly with Barry Chavans. And from then I I started including observers, ob observing women as much as I observe men involved in, in violence. Wow. It's 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 very interesting in that doc when we talk about violence a lot, we talk about women as being victims. Yes. Um, we don't really talk about women being perpetrators. And for 20 years of research, that sounds to me like it's been happening for quite some time, um, A, well. and B, that it, it may be more prevalent than we actually think. Is this so? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, let me give you the comparative pre uh, prevalence. It's uh, to every, every, every 10 uh, kills that men do, women do one. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so, wow. All right, so you say, um, hmm. the, the, the kerosene woman then, it says, the, one, the ones who are making the calls, planning the getaway, setting up the link. When, when we talk about, can you define that woman for us? All right, uh, so I, I don't know about the terms that people use uh, or others use, but we, we simply use the term vulnerable and dangerous because we understand the triggers mm -hmm. that lead women into that, that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the same way as most young men uh, are, are people who are, who, who, who would say not be a sadist, uh, most persons who get involved in violence started from a point of vulnerability. Yeah. So uh, I understand the ker kerosene oil uh, analogy, analogy or yeah. metaphor. Yeah. Uh, but we're talking here about women who operate as gun bags, uh, importees. These are persons who host criminals knowingly. Uh, and we have the enforcers, as in women who actually hit and hurt others. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the strategists. These are the ones that nobody see who, who actually does enormous amount of work in in what you see, community wars and those things. And then we have the sleeper, who is the one who, who uses sex to reduce uh, a man's capacity to fight back. And the others will, of course, in that case, come in and harm the opponent. Uh, and then we have the contract killers. These are the most silent uh, women that nobody estimates. And the gun bag is, is, is who, Doc? She carries... uh, that's the most common. They're in specific order. Gun bags are the most popular, and these are women who carry in weapons, or simply transport weapons, and or rent weapons mm -hmm. for for gangs. I, I I saw a clip the other day, Doc. American gangsters, um, specifically episodes about women, and there was yes. a Jamaican woman, mother, yes. grandmother, um, who. Well, I would see her as a strategist. Well, I would see her as maybe five out of those things that you just named. <laughs> yes, yes. But, yes, but, but on the yes. surface, not someone that we would say, oh, she might be a gangster. Yes. Yes. Um, is that also true here in Jamaica? Because I find sometimes we have in yes. our head the image of who the gangster is, and then we overlook yes. the re some real ones. It, does that pertain as well 
to the to the women here in Jamaica? Yes, we have a few hurt middle class young women who are involved in gangs. In the same way, we have a few middle class men who are involved in gangs. Oh. So you say 70%, 78% of female gang members participated by force, but these do petty yes. roles. So this would be, I guess a petty role would be like the gun bag. I mean, relative. Yes, it's, it's, petty is relative. It's, it's, it's considered petty compared to a right. strategy. Right, for the 64% of all women who are killed in Jamaica as a result of gang war. Yes. 32% um, are the trigger women. 13% yes. trigger mean they pull the trigger, right? No, trigger, no. okay, so so 64% of all the women who die in Jamaica are as a result of gang war. What? Right. Really? So, which, is the point, which is the point I've been making for a very long time, that you can't really solve violence against women unless you solve the entire violence because almost two-thirds of any woman at all you see killed in Jamaica is as a result of a war going on between men, all right? And out of that group, I'm breaking down that group now, you will see that 32% or a third, almost a third of all women you see die in Jamaica is because there's a gang war and there is the need to kill women to trigger that war. Oh, That's oh why it's called God. triggering. Yeah. And 13% are of the women are accused of being either a sleeper or an informer. 11% mm. are, are as a result of gang wipeouts where the gang kill whoever they can find in a family. And 8% of all women who die in Jamaica is because they were war strategists. This is this. So I mean, if, I you look, notice, yes. if you notice, yes. If you notice, uh, most of those women would be would be innocent. But if you also notice. Uh, some of those women would have actually been activists, active members of gangs. You know, you know, Dr. Gayla, sit and watch you talk sometimes about these things that are so heinous. And I mean, this and other things that have to do with crime and whether it's a young man or a young woman or young men. Or women, it's almost like you get to a point where you have to kind of desensitize yourself, no? Or do you just become desensitized because of what you're seeing? No, I don't. I, 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 I actually hurt like anybody else. It's just that uh, after a while, you have some degree of expectation oh. and, and you, you develop, you develop the, the, the capacity to, to stay safe and to, to, to know when harm is coming. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you, are, you, you may feel 10% safer, but there's always that part of you that says, oh my, not again. You know, there's always this part, even even as a, a violence expert, there's even there's always this part like the old man looking at the stocking and hoping there doesn't have a hole, mm -hmm. right. hoping that you'll have a, a peaceful day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you've ranked the victims in, you say, victims of women in rank order. That's also from you, Doc. Mm -hmm. I, I want some explanations there. Yes. Victims so, so, of women and... and and children, children are included? Children are the number one, yes. Boys are the number one victims of women's anger or aggression. Boys. Oh my gosh. Well, that, that tells us a lot, eh? Repeated burns, lashings, humiliations, mm. uh, ranging from uh, still one of the most graphic I've seen, a mother rubbing chicken back fat on a child and tying him to a tree in, in the ant's nest mm. uh, and quarreling with the ants that they're not biting him. Mm. So, he, so, so humans, so when you look at those, those, those are mothers who live in a situation of extreme violence, 80% of which, of whom, sorry, would have been tortured mm. or sexually abused as a child. Cycle. Remember, we have this term that we we use loosely that says hurt people, hurt people. A cycle. It's not to be taken loosely. Mm -hmm. It is actually very serious. Uh, between 75 and 80% of persons who are hurt, once you put someone in their care, they will hurt that person. Oh my God. Okay, so it's not that women are different or special in this case, because if you, if you, if you do the same with a male, mm -hmm. you'll get the same result. So they do that to children. You say neighbor. 
rival yes, gang. Yes, women have a lot of knife fights with neighbors, violent women. And then we have rival gangs, which is third, and then their partner. Mm. And of course, uh, female partners uh, have a higher proportion of being battered than male partners. So we're not talking about absolute numbers, we're talking about the proportion out of 100. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Métis, which makes up 11% of all deaths of women in Jamaica. 11% is Métis war. Doc, yeah. we're, we're, we need like three days to unpack all of what you, you've just said and studied because, it, you know, when we say a crime plan, a lot of these, things that we're discussing, the types of information that you have garnered mm -hmm. has to be plugged mm -hmm. into a crime plan. Because unless we plug it, then we, we're chasing the horse. Thank you so much. Always, always enlightening to speak with you. I hope we speak with you again very soon. Social anthropologist and senior lecturer, Dr. Herbert Gale. So what do we do from here? What do we do with that? Wow. What do we do with that to try and change? Things. Wow. wow. Maybe that's something we can ask Dr. Gale when we talk to him again. Yeah. All right. In f just fascinating. Uh, moving on to a story of tragedy turned into triumph.